Hello everyone, and welcome to another Fire Character Guide. Forgive the voice, we have a bit of a cold, but let's move straight into it. Today, we're going to talk about the Graf Zeppelin in its final released form. It's finally here, it's out in the wilderness, that's if you already bought it. Uh, it's had a somewhat protracted uh, development cycle since last August, and now is March 2018. But it's here, and if you bought it, you've got it. If you didn't buy it, you're going to have to wait another three months. Right. Let's have a look at the ship now, shall we? So here she is. Absolutely gorgeous ship. This props up to the developers for making a very, very pretty, well-designed uh, ship and, and accurately represented in the game. So first off, we'll have a quick look at the, the hull. We'll talk about the fires, the bombers, uh, the, the, the mechanics of the ship, how it plays out, what is good, what is bad. And then um, in a follow-up video, we'll actually take it into some uh, random battles and we can show her as she is. So, first off the bat, her hull. Is there anything special about her hull compared to other tier 8 cars? Not really, in the grand scheme of things. She has 72 planes, she has the same bulge protection as the Lexington, 18% which is the lowest. Her speed is reasonable at 33 knots. Her concealment with the concealment module and the concealment expert on the captain is 11.9 kilometers, which is perfectly acceptable. Um, uh, her anti-air defense is pretty good in that it's 120 at 5.4 with AFT, uh, so it's got good self-defense, especially with defensive fire. Its real selling point on the Graf Zeppelin is the fact that it has uh, German secondaries, which means with advanced fire training and the secondary signal equipped, you can get your secondaries up to 7.9 kilometers in range without negatively impacting your fighter planes. That's great. That's cool. It's a nice gimmick. Sure, whatever. And the guns themselves are actually very accurate, uh, and they can actually hit targets at 7.9 kilometers. It's not just a random shotgun spread. The other gimmick that the Graf Zeppelin gets, which is very strange, is a hydroacoustic surge. Okay. So uh, detection of ships at 4.2, uh, torpedoes at 2.9, is active for 94 seconds, reload 120 seconds uh, with the premium uh, consumable. Uh, okay. I would not recommend charging in to destroy or smoke with secondary guns blazing using your hydro. It's very amusing, but it's probably going to get you killed. But amusing nonetheless. That's the hull. Nothing super fancy. Very nice, very pretty. Is more or less balanced compared to every other tier 8 ship. Now, fighters. Let's have a look at our fighter planes. The Graf Zeppelin has two module setups. It has a 1 2 1. That's one fighter, one, uh, two torpedo bombers, one dive bomber, and it has a 203. So that's two fighters, no torpedo bombers, and three dive bombers. The choice of bombers is also interesting. We have normal torpedo bombers and we have deep water torpedo bombers. We have high explosive and we have armor piercing. Now, as for the fighter planes, as we said, if you go one, two, one, you get a wave of nine. And if you go two, zero, three, you get two waves of six. The fighters have slightly more health than the Enterprise in that they're tier 7 fighters compared to the Lexington Chicago that use tier 8s and the Enterprise that uses tier 7s. Um, the ammo is on par with that, the Chicago, and interestingly the 203 setup of the Graf Zeppelin is very similar to the Chicago's 222, which we'll show in a little moment. Uh, they are the fastest planes, and comparatively speaking, the the 1 to 1, the fighter, the capacity is extremely low. And I'm going to show a picture here to somewhat kind of overlay um, how bizarrely the Zeppelin is balanced because it's, it's at extremes. It's not a well rounded fighter ship, it's extremes in certain setups. So if we show this here. So this little chap here um, is a little graph I made showcasing uh, the strengths of the different carriers at tier 8. So we'll see that. The Enterprise, which is known for its strong fighter reserves and a lot of them, has the most fighter waves at 7.1. Uh, the, the waves that can go out. It's got the highest fighter count at 43 planes, and it's got a combined strafe toll for two planes that are out of 10.2. So it's actually quite high, it's really powerful. And we'll see that the uh, Graf Zeppelin at 203 and the Chicago 222 are actually fairly similar in that they're, they have two waves. Uh, their wave sizes are fives and sixes. We can see that the total fire waves are more or less the same. The fire planes are 24, roughly the same. The wave damage when the strafe is almost the same, and, and the wave HP is slightly more for the uh, Graf 7 because it has a sixth plane. <laughs> and, but when we go to 121, which is the Graf Zeppelin, 
you see there's a spike in the wave size up to nine. It's like the highest wave size ever now. It's more than the Lexington 7. So it's very similar if we see in shape to the Lexington. The Lexington being green and the graph cell being green here. But the thing is, the Lexington has a single fighter wave, as does the Zeppelins 121, but the strafe damage of the Zeppelins 121 is incredibly high. Rather than coming out from behind targets, you can go side on or you can go head on with a strafe and it does tremendous amount of damage. However, the Lexington makes up for the fact that it's only got a single fire wave because it has large amounts of ammunition, so it can have five strafes. It's still one of the lowest com total combined strafes if you, if you combine the two waves of, like, say, Chicago or the Enterprise, but it's got five waves and it can strafe a lot, and that means it can go after fighters or it can exit strafe or it can go after bombers multiple times and strafing rather than clicking on. The one two one Chicago can't do that. It's only got three strafes. So you're like, you do one, Two, and then, well, you're down to your last thing. So you're, you're, you're maybe you're trying to fight the enemy fighters, and you've used two strafes up in that sense or some ammunition, and now you've got one little amount left to go for bombers. So the enemy CV just needs to split up. And that's kind of the weakness of the one to one is that it can't necessarily be everywhere at once. It can't protect everyone. It can't do the roles of uh, team support, logistics, uh, that type of element. It's all about uh, you choosing to engage when you want to and you defending on your bombers or defending the team. You can't do both. So it's... And then the other issue is the total fire waves. The reserve count, or the total plane count, I should say, in the Zeppelin, is only 16. But then again, the Lexington is only 18, so there's only two less planes. But the Lexington has a wave count of seven, so it can have two and a bit waves of fighters, so it can wipe one wave, and then it can still come out with another full wave. For the Zeppelin, however, with a wave size of 9, once you lose that wave, maybe you get a bad strafe, maybe you're engaged, maybe someone uses defensive fire in a tier 9-10 game, whatever reason that you lose that plane, you then only have a second wave of 7 planes, and that's it. You're totally out. You, you, you're dry. So it's very, very careful of how you use your fire planes in the one two one setup. For the 203 setup, however, you have 24 planes. It's the exact same as Chicago. You've got two... Uh, fighter groups of six planes and it's actually better and a click on engagements uh the 203 um is strong it beats the lexington well on two on one it will beat another chicago on two on one it will beat the chicago on a simple one on one clicks and it will uh with, and this is assuming you have the captain skill dogfighting expert and it ties with the enterprise because they're practically the same in terms of uh everything except from ammunition so it's interesting how Wargaming has balanced this, but you can see how they've, with, with the 203, it's interesting, but the fighters are on par, but the, the bombing is another issue which we'll come to. But the fighters skew way off to the top in terms of wave size and, and health and damage, but they have absolutely no reserves. So that, like I say, they are a glass cannon, which is <laughs> interesting, but probably statistically weak. But, you know, it, it's to be seen. So, now if we get back into the game... What about some of the torpedo bombers? Well, as I say, we have deep water torpedoes and we have um, normal torpedoes. What's the difference? They do the same amount of damage, they have the same range, same speed, all the same mechanics, same health, all that type of stuff. The only difference is that the deep water torpedoes cannot hit destroyers, they can hit cruisers, battleships, aircraft carriers, and they ha the deep water torpedoes have double the flooding chance. Wargaming didn't say what the flooding chance was, they just said that the flooding chance is double. So this is interesting because it, you can guarantee a flooding on a large target um, and maybe you can use a dive bomber with high explosive armor piercing bombs. And, but you would think, well, the armor piercing bombs are really powerful and we'll come to that again. So the choice is, do you want to sacrifice the ability to hit destroyers to increase the flooding chance on big ships? And the answer to that is probably not. Because with the uh, signal flags, you can get 15% and an extra 4% from two signal flags. That, with the fact that you've got two wave of five torpedo bombers which drop in a cross pattern, you're probably going to get one that causes a flooding. You'd be very unlucky not to. And since flooding isn't something that stacks, a simple flooding dot is all you really want or need. So do you need to sacrifice the ability to hit destroyers? Probably not, no. Because if, if you don't have torpedo bombers that can hit destroyers, your dive bombers are not going to hit them. They're going to miss, um, unless you're extremely lucky. And then what are you going to do? Rely on your secondaries and get within 7.9 kilometers? No, that's, that sounds like a terrible idea. So I'm sure some people will make deep water torps work, but for me personally, I'm not sold on the idea as of right now. Um, both bombers, now we talk about the high explosive dive bombers, they're both huge Junkers uh, JU-87C, known as Stukas. The thing is, they both run at 135 knots. 
The speed of these planes means that once they've dropped their payload, they can't really be used in the scouting role in the sense that they can escape fighters. They're not fast enough. So that is a role still reserved for the Japanese carriers. Um, the interesting thing about the dive bombers is that they have a circle drop pattern. So it's a circular drop. Um, the left click is a slightly bigger uh, circle. Uh, manual is a slightly tighter circle. And under defensive fire, the panic effect isn't that too great. Which brings us to the issue of left clicking, right? So the fact is, the Graf Zeppelin in its 203 setup is a very low skill carrier to play. You can quite sl happily select all three dive bomber waves, which are wave sizes of six, whereas the 121, the wave size is 10. Um, this is assuming you're using the captain skill that gives you plus one. So you've got 18 dive bombers or 10. You just left click on a target and then you just watch. And then this is where with, with manual aim, you can increase the chance that you hit with more bombs. Without manual aim, you're going to drop uh, more around the target. Because it's a circle drop, when you actually c drop on the top, there'll be some bombs that f go around the edge if you're going in the circle. So it's, you're not going to hit with all of them like the elliptical pattern, for example, of the uh, American AP dive bombs. But you'll do incredible amount of damage. This ship does insane damage to tier 8s, 9s, and 10s. In this training ship, in some of these games, deleted a Friedrich de Gross, that's a tier 9 German battleship, with just 11 bombs. Uh, with 14 bombs, I did uh, 79,000 damage to a Kurfurst, that's the tier 10, and it still does 50,000 damage to Yamatos and other things, so the, the, the damage that you do is dependent on A, RNG, how many bombs hit, and B, the type of bomb hits you then make on said ship. So it fluctuates a lot. Unlike torpedoes, which are consistent damage, dive bombers, you're going to have spectacular games, which people are going to cry about on Reddit saying the ship is OP, which is in that sense when RNG is generous. And then you're going to have games where you have pathetic damage or drops where you do no damage whatsoever because the bombs didn't hit the right target or they didn't hit at all or they just didn't do the right amount of damage or didn't get the right penetration hits when you hit them. So it's kind of all over the place there. But it is very easy to use, and that's why you'll see lots of people really enjoying this ship because you just left-click with it. <laughs> the, uh, so, the ship statistically is weak compared to the other aircraft carriers. And by that I mean 121 can't do the same air control. It can do, with the 10 wave of dive bomber, it can do a lot of damage. It's very powerful. With the torpedo bombers, you can go have multiple targets. But the issue comes down to air control. It's okay against the Lexington because they have reasonable fire numbers. It is okay-ish against the Shukaku in 222. Um, because your one fire can muscle his and you can get a temporary advantage to bomb. But against the Enterprise, he can completely lock you out because of his fight reserves. And it's a very difficult kind of mechanic in that sense. But your strike potential is extremely high. But it's still, as I say, statistically weaker. And it's not viable 1-2-1 one, one for any form of competitive or ranked because you don't have any staying power. You don't have the extra fire planes. You don't have that air control, the air denial of sighting, that type of stuff. And you don't have the bombers to then go and scout themselves. You're basically just bombing with this thing all the time. Maybe you can use the dive bomber after a drop and spawn and scout with it but it's not going to escape any fires because it doesn't have the speed so statistically speaking it is weaker uh, in that sense but because of the sheer striking capability of the dive bomber and the fact that the torpedo bombers themselves also do the highest damage at 10,500 it is a very very powerful ship in terms of uh how you would classify the ship the enterprise is kind of fighter based the chicago is kind of a balanced uh, type ship the lexington is kind of more bombing focused and the graf zeppelin 121 is very much like a glass cannon the graf zeppelin 203 has the same fighter strength as the chicago but it doesn't have the cross dropping capability of the torpedoes it doesn't have the opportunity to flood and if you're using armor piercing bombs which realistically that's what you probably want to do because they do the real damage and you can use high explosive if you want but you're not doing the same amount of like immense destruction well, then you don't have a source of fire, so you're not doing any sort of dots. And that's what the Japanese uh, Shikako can do. It has the same fire control, but it has the cross-dropping torpedoes and the fire and the scouting of the dive bombers. But it doesn't have that insane alpha strike the Graf Zeppelin gets. So, statistically, the Zeppelin is weaker in a supportive role, but in, in a, as a straight-up attack, it's insane. It's absolutely crazy. Um, and that brings us to so that left-click adventure type thing. If you're thinking about ranked, 203, bizarrely, is probably actually quite viable in ranked, because in the last ranked season, if it was tier 8, we were using the Shikaku for a DD meta, but the meta shifted towards the Enterprise, because the Enterprise was better at killing battleships with its AP bombs, which are nowhere near as good penetration-wise as the, uh, the Graf Zeppelins, but they have the elliptical drop pattern, so you can more lively hit. But the point is, the Enterprise has more fireplanes, can do more air control, and can kill the battleships more easily than the Shikaku can. And since the 
the meta of the tier eight at that time was three to four battleships every game, it made sense to play the Enterprise a lot. So if the tier eight meta came back again and we played another rank season, 203 Zeppelin might actually work because unlike the Enterprise where you have to approach a certain angle to do an elliptical drop to get the maximum of damage, Zeppelin bombs can come in in any direction with the circle drop and you just left click on a battleship, boom, deleted, gone. One, just one thing. And you've got two fighter planes that can viably contend with the uh, Enterprise because the Enterprise fighters beat the Shikaku fighters in a click engagement, so the Shikaku has to micro more and barrage. Whereas the Zeppelin fighters, when they click in the, uh, the Enterprise fighters, are far more balanced in the engagement and no one necessarily wins. So in a long game, yes, the Enterprise will win out because of its extra plane reserves because of its hangar capacity, but usually ranked games don't go that long, especially if you're deleting battleships left, right, and center. The vulnerability, though, of the Grass Zeppelin 203 is it can't go after destroyers. I, I've tried dropping um, Kabarosks, manual dropping when it's stationary, auto dropping. I can get no hits, one hit, two hit, no hit, no hit, five hit. That's that's the RNG that you get with this thing. And then with the HE bombs, and it's it's not accurate to hit small targets. So in a closing thought, the Zeppelin is really enjoyable to play, but it's messily balanced. It's yeah, it's like, as I was showing with the fire stats, certain st statistics about this thing are off the chart, absolutely and crazily off the chart, but other statistics about it are very weak, you know, weak in scouting or weak in fire capacity, that type of stuff. So, it's a very easy ship to use. It's left click a -thon. You can you can learn to use it, and then you can use the other kind of set. You can use 203 for a while, learn it, and then maybe use 121 and, you know, practice your strafing skills or something, or practice your torpedo bomb skills. So in that sense, it's, it's good. But you are somewhat RNG dependent. RNG will dictate on the matchmaking that you get better targets, and it'll also dictate when you dive bomb how much damage you do. But you can literally left click your fires to engage the enemy fires, group up your dive bombers, left click on a battleship, and just watch it delete. And you can even go after cruisers as well. I've, I've seen Neptunes and Minotaurs and other cruisers that are also deleted, so you just find the best target, left click, boom, and it dies. And then you can just eat a burrito while you watch it happen. It's just it's insane. So. It's a very good ship, but it's also highly disappointing. You'd think with um, like six months of balancing work going into this and the myriad of options and other ways they could have balanced the ship, like the drop pattern that is circular, which is cool, perhaps slightly tighter like the Kaga or using not 121, but 221. Millions of other options that could have been done and have been reviewed by myself in the past. That's not the way Wargame have gone. They've used a Graf Zeppelin. The end result is, what is this? This is a Nikolai. This is an incredibly powerful OP, pay to win, whoever you want to call it, it's an extremely powerful ship. And just going into random battles and engaging things, you do insane amount of damage and you can just delete people. It's not fun for them, it's fun for you, but you're destroying someone else. It is extremely, extremely powerful. Um, and if you're a good player, you can mask its slight deficiencies and... It's insane. It's absolutely crazy. That means you're less reliant on RNG. So it's it's very, very powerful. And I'm somewhat disappointed in that because I was looking for a balance ship that would be good and competitive, good and ranked, and maybe good and randoms, like we have somewhat with the Shikako and the Enterprise. But that's not what it is. It's just an extremely powerful bombing ship, a little bit on RNG, uh, boarding on Nikolai levels in, of just sheer destructive power. Uh, will I play it a lot? Yeah. It's extremely fun. But it doesn't exactly fill me with confidence for the upcoming rework on how they're kind of doing the, pa the carriers because this, this is essentially a left-click adventure if you want to get the map most out of it with the minimum effort. And that has me concerned. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Go watch one of the following videos now where we take this into random battles and I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.